What's going on you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here and welcome back to today's episode of the Casual Nerd. I can't find my glasses. <laughs> oh wait, no, hold on a second. Actually, wait, where are they? Glasses, hello? Where are you glasses? Ugh. Oh, okay, there you are. <laughs> I was trying to do cool effects stuff with my glasses. It sometimes looks cringe, sometimes looks okay. I mean, you know, you have to choose your battle. But welcome back to today's episode of The Casual Nerd. We're going to be going into a trailer. It's kind of short. It's only 30 seconds long, but it's one that I've been wanting to review from Cyberpunk 2077, where Keanu Reeves is just... He's telling you to live your best life, honestly. I mean, like, what more can we ask? So I'm excited. Who's excited for Cyberpunk coming out next month? Unless they delay it again. Look at this dude. Oh my god, he was my first Hollywood crush ever when I was a kid watching The Matrix. Oh my god. All right, we're gonna go into Cyberpunk 2077, seize the day. Let's do it. In 2077, what makes someone a criminal? Getting caught. <laughs> I'm so excited. In that city, you can become anyone, anything, if your body can... Oh my god! Oh my god, wait a second, wait a second, Billie Eilish? Billie Eilish? I'm the bad guy. Duh. It's definitely Billie Eilish. Wait a second, I want to hear that again. Anything, if your body can pay the price. Yeah, I love it. So seize the day, then set it on fire. This is so cool. a great song choice by the way for this game i mean i don't know what it is it has like sex appeal but it's like not you're 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 basically a renegade on the run with this entire game and i think this is so cool to see this one i say we have to look at this again i need to be fully immersed because i just want to be able to like in 2077 what makes someone a criminal getting caught He's just always on point with so much of his acting. Anyone, anything, if your body can pay the price. So seize the day, then set it on fire. Oh, I already have a pre-ordered baby. I love it. I, I, I freaking love it. I'm so excited to play this game. You guys have no idea. I am ready. You hear me? I'm ready. Today's episode is going to be kind of short, in a way, because we don't have much gaming news. Um, I, on my end, I just wanted to make today's episode a little bit shorter because there, there wasn't, like, major breaking news. I don't know if what you guys would consider what I'm going to be showing you and what the links are going to be down in the description below breaking news, but it's news nonetheless. I don't have any news today that's like, oh my god, the press, hot stuff, did you see that? Like, no, I, did, I don't have any of that kind of stuff. I have more or less things that you guys are going to find possibly interesting. So first up in gaming news, we're going to discuss something new from the Pokemon Company, per usual because they can't take a break. Something called Pokemon Home, which is going to be coming at the end of this year. It states here in the article that the Pokemon Company has announced that a link between Pokemon Go and Pokemon Home will be set up before the end of 2020. This will allow the transfer of Pokemon between the mobile Pokemon Go app and the Pokemon Sword and Shield Nintendo Switch games. Revealed by Pokemon Company President and CEO Tizanaku Ishihira. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, I apologize. The link will enable Pokemon caught in the Pokemon Go to to set off an adventure in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield by way of Pokemon Home. This is really cool. It, it's a lot of programming. <laughs> it's a lot of programming to do, um, but this is really fascinating to see. I like that they're slowly starting to reinvent themselves, which they need. They need a good rebranding, honestly. Like, not a full-on rebranding, kind of just like a soft rebranding at this point, but I, I feel like they're they're pumping out so much that they just need to take a break, reevaluate their core assets and what they find interesting about the universe of Pokemon and go from there. Like what really, I don't know, sets their passions on fire again, because I feel like they're pumping out the same thing. This, however, this is really cool. This is new. It continues on stating that there's more to the system than just that too. If you send a Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home, you'll be able to open a mystery box in Pokemon Go. Opening the box will cause the mythical Pokemon Melton to appear on the map within the Pokemon Go app. In addition, you'll also receive a mystery gift in Pokemon Home which contains special Mel Metal capable of Ganga to maxing for use in Pokemon Sword and Shield. A few of my friends are going to be very interested by this news. I can guarantee that. I have some uber Pokemon fans out there. You all know who you are if you watch my channel. It's really fascinating to see how the progression through the years, like from the time I was like seven years old seeing Pokemon to like 
how it's growing now and evolving, no pun intended, but seriously, it's really cool to see this happening. Next up in gaming news, we're going to talk about the game Among Us, which was kindly gifted to me by one of our community members. I'm very excited, but also trepidatious about the game because I know I'm going to want to be the killer. Like, you can just guarantee right now I'm going to be the killer in your game if I play Among Us with you and you're going to like it. Now, in this article about Among Us, we're going to be discussing its popularity, which actually it links up to what we're going to be discussing on Friday for the Psychologically Gaming of the Week, where I'm going to be talking about why people choose to be the killer in Among Us. It should be a very interesting episode. It was something that was recommended by a community member of ours, so I really, really appreciate that. Um, Midnight, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. And I'm really excited about going into that because there is a lot of psychology behind why people choose the killer, not just in Among Us, but in any game for that matter. It states here in the article that the Cloak and Dagger party game, fashioned in the tradition of classic social deduction activities like Mafia and Werewolf, was initially released in the summer of 2018 exclusively for Androids and iPhones to a winsome, but mostly neglected response. The gameplay was always solid, but for whatever reason, be it the exclusivity to mobile platforms, the local-only multiplayer, or the limited marketing abilities of the developer inner sloth small team, Among Us didn't catch on with the general gaming public. By the time it hits Steam a year later with online multiplayer patched in, nobody expected it to become a runaway success. I absolutely love that they decided to take the leap and add the online multiplayer because that's where it's at. Like They analyzed the market, they took it, and they're like, okay, we need to reassess everything that we know about how to sell a video game, and they sold it brilliantly. Online multiplayer is the future. Unfortunately for some of us older players, I will have to say, because it, it, it's kind of weird seeing multiplayer become as big of a thing as it actually is. I mean, I'm not surprised, but in also another way I am surprised, because when we were playing games back in the day, it was just us. It wasn't all of us around a table. And now take that for what you will because I was an only child, but I know for a lot of families, they would like exchange the controller between different people and like play on the GameCube that way. Or if you had multiple controllers, you could play multiplayer, but it was very seldom that you did see that kind of thing back in the 90s and early 2000s. Now for me personally, as you guys know, the first game I ever played was Resident Evil 1 Remake. So that was a solo journey for me. Like that was something that I just played on my own and my dad would just hover over and watch because, you know, I was 10 years old at the time killing zombies. So fun times. <laughs> Lastly, in gaming news today, we're gonna go over some more cyberpunk news with the latest and quite possibly one of the most interesting articles I've read to date in the development of the game. Now, it states here in the article that Polish video game developer CD Projekt Red told employees on Monday that six-day work weeks will be mandatory leading up to the November release of the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077, reneging onto an earlier promise to not force overtime on the project, which it, it's kind of interesting because people might not understand why they have to do overtime if the project is basically done and they're releasing it. There's so many last minute details, so many last minute little checks and things that have to happen in order for a game to be properly released. Get the first CD, get the first uh, game disc, rather not CD. I'm thinking of music for a second. Um, you have to like really double check, triple check, quadruple check every little thing. It continues on in stating that Red, a subsidiary of Poland's biggest gaming company, CD Projekt SA, has been criticized previously for engaging in crunch, an industry term for excessive overtime in game development. The practice often lasts for weeks and can stretch out for months or even the years. CD Projekt Red co-chief executive officer Marcin Iwinski, if I pronounce that correctly, last year told gaming website Kotaku that the gaming company would be avoiding mandatory crunch and was committed to allowing employees to work without overtime. Which I get why they're doing the overtime now because now is crunch time. You need to make sure of any last minute bugs, any last minute kind of errors or flaws in the algorithm or anything like that. Do play testing over and over and over again. You know, the speedrunners are always welcome. And it, it, just, just to make sure of any little last minute thing, I think what they're doing is wise at this last minute stage, just to double check, because in the past, you know, you could just tell that the company was nervous about releasing a game that was unfinished. That's why they had to delay it several times, which I'm glad about. He's on stating that, but an account from CD Projekt Red employee recently, as well as an email to staff earlier this week, indicated that the company hasn't lived up to its word. The employee who asked not to be named discussing private information said that some staff had already been putting in nights and weekends for more than a year. Which, you know, that's not good, but it's also not surprising 
surprising either with the way that they delayed the game, with the way that everything went. Do I think they should be doing crunch time when it comes to like a month, two months before the game's release? Absolutely. But if you're stating one thing and then you're stating something on a complete polar opposite, then you can't do that. Like it, it's really, really, really important that once a company puts something out there, especially in writing, like you cannot go back on your word or you can't just say one thing and then do another. That's no, that's putting like a bad trust, if you will, in the company. But you guys, that is it for me for today's casual nerd episode. If you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and double uploads on Friday. Stay casually nerdy and I will see you guys in the next video, which we will be reviewing Code Veronica X. Oh god, that game. It literally gave me nightmares. But that game, the controls, the controls just gave me nightmares alone. Not the story. The story is absolutely amazing. But the controls itself just gave me, just gave me nightmares. I can't wait to go full in depth with you guys on that game. It's it's really interesting because I haven't played that game in the Resident Evil franchise. And it was so cool to go back to the roots, even though that was a reimagined version. 2011. But stay casual and nerdy, you guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.